This week on the Ritual Misery Podcast, we're going to dive deep into our Patreon. Ooh, like uh, maybe a little trick-or-treat action at the bottom of the bowl? What? Uh, I mean, it, if I can catch it on my ring uh, doorbell, that'd be awesome. Well, as long as you're not, take, not taking too many pictures. Um, yeah, try to get a picture of a Terminator. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 233 for Thursday, the 7th of November, 2019. This is, this is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. I barely remember to hit the record button on the video in time. And how's your Thursday, Kent? Hey, it's Thursday. It's the best <laughs> day of the week because it's Ritual Misery. Glad to be here, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Um, we, we didn't do a show last week. We did not. We Between the Niners playing on Thursday Night Football, uh, Halloween occurring, and both of us having uh, varying levels of activity during that. And also, I mean, once in a while, we just need a fucking break. Did, did you dress up last week? For Halloween? Yeah. Uh, I dressed as a partially dressed um, uh, uh, appliance repairman. <laughs> okay. As in, I was... Doing oh look at you with the fucking glasses, um I, I was doing uh, kitchen repairs, uh and handing out candy. I uh, I did dress up, and uh, not not a lot of people recognized who I was. There was probably about um, I don't know, ten or fewer people that recognized me. But the people that did recognize me were super excited about it. Oh yeah, I was. <laughs> well, it all started because we were having a clue themed party yeah uh, the the weekend prior so yeah. like almost two weeks ago uh-huh. uh, clue as in the board game yeah. uh, movie right so you, the idea was to come dressed as as a character well i decided to go as mr white mr white yeah and uh dressed as walter white and, mm, uh, people I, that have seen breaking bad see? knew immediately who i was I, I I didn't I didn't get Walter White out of that, but I did get Mr. White because that's kind of what he looked like in, in the movie. Was there a Mr. White? I thought yeah. it was Mrs. White. Oh, I don't I know. Mrs. White was Look, the... I'm just making shit up. You're supposed to just flow with it, man. Where's your improbability? I mean, oh the oh that movie. Yeah. I thought we were talking about you know Mr. The White, the one that before he died, you know, before Miss <laughs> Mrs. White killed him and got blackmailed for it. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, I remember that. That was one of the alternate endings. I think yeah, that the Scooby Doo endings. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, no, I, uh, my oven went out uh, the night we had our Halloween party, which was the Friday prior, which was awesome by the way. Um, but, uh, I was digging in that, trying to troubleshoot that and try to figure out exactly what was wrong with it. It's the first time I've ever used my, my air force electrical and environmental training outside of the air force. Like not like, Oh, I know what an ohm meter is, but like broke out the schematics and the wiring diagrams and shit was literally troubleshooting it. Uh, I mean, every time you charge your iPhone, I think you're using your E and E skills. Or uh, when you change a light bulb, no, uh, light bulbs are crew chief's problems. Jackets. Oh, got it, got it. That's, okay, that's servicing. <laughs> <laughs> but charging your devices, I think, is firmly in the E and E realm. No, no, not like this. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, that's what I did on Halloween. And I got to watch the Niners go 8-0 on a season, which I'm not even trying to say is all that impressive because really it's not. They have had one of the weakest schedules of the year. However, they are the last remaining undefeated team in the NFL, and that means something somewhere to somebody. Yeah, that's pretty cool that you're you're still uh, rooting strongly for the 49ers. A uh, thick and thin, man. Yeah, I, I stuck with them even, even when they were shitty. Like every year since 94. Yeah, I stopped following. <laughs> I stopped following the 49ers when I stopped following football uh, mm. many, many, many years ago. Due mostly to overseas assignments and deployments and whatnot, it's really hard to keep up with sports. Yeah. Um, these days, I watch a lot more football these days, and part of that is because my significant other enjoys football, and her family are huge Green Bay Packers fans. So, kind of, I guess by default. That makes me a Packers fan. Right. Uh, especially considering the Colts aren't doing shit and 
Oh, also, uh, the pack just lost to the Chargers last weekend. Yeah. How, how does that even happen? I, I don't know, man. I, was that their, I think that was their first loss. Second. Of this season. Second loss? Second okay. loss. Oh, maybe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a second loss of the season. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Um, I know it was at least their second. It might have been the third, but I'm, I'm going to go in, uh, in, in their favor and say the second. I know I won my fantasy game this past week so that's all that really matters to me for people. i mean i mean seriously um so yeah halloween was fun uh i will say that we did speak this would be a perfect transition to the ring if i had the video loaded but i don't we had a little girl like a uh, we had a, a baby chair out there not like a high chair but like a small dining room table chair little tiny one for, for five-year-olds mm-hmm. a tiny skeleton on it and a old dress and then like some uh, a wig over top of it to where you couldn't see the face and it had like a little hat and like it was it basically looked like the girl from the ring mm. except she was sitting in a chair and then I did some hoochie bougie with some sound effects and some uh, some um, uh, McLeod uh, yeah uh, McLeod fan, uh, oh those yeah uh, what the hell am I trying to say here uh, Kevin McLeod damn it I, I hate <laughs> I can say his name at the end of the show. I can never remember otherwise. Um, oh, you mean the the internet soundtrack? Got yes, it. yes. Well, I found some creepy music from Kevin McLeod, put that oh. on there, and then found some tracks of YouTubers using some reverb and things like that to make creepy girl voices. Oh, wow. So I made a six-minute track with these creepy voices coming in. Like It'd be like, you're going to die in there. Oh, my. And would you come play with me? I'm lonely. Which- I don't have anyone to play with. And like those were like every 30 seconds that would happen. And then I looped that for six hours. You, you should have put in, hi, I'm Poppy. No. <laughs> no. I, I wasn't trying to creep myself out. <laughs> right. um, so yeah, we had that looping for every six hours. So every 30 seconds, she would say something. Mm. And of course, the speaker and the iPod were all hidden and shit, you know? Mm-hmm. This one kid, they, they walk up and they hit the doorbell. And as soon as Amber answers, the kid's like, your house is haunted. That little girl talked to me. She's not supposed to talk to me. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Really well good. Done. Fun times. Um, but yeah, so that brings me into Ring. And I, I just want to bring up Ring's new feature. I have several Ring cameras around the house, all of them external. Mm-hmm. And the you know motion sensors, things like that. They now have a feature. And you can do this with any of the cameras, but I'm going to tell you what I've done. If, so, if the... Oh, there we go. Thank Thanks, you, Debbie Scott. Is one subscription. Um, if some if if the ring doorbell senses motion, the camera over the garage will ha- the floodlights will come on and it'll start recording as well. If the camera of the garage senses motion, the lights will come on and the doorbell will start recording as well. Okay. So. Basically, they can interact with each other and tell each other when, like, I could just have the lights come on and not record the garage, the driveway camera, but I have it doing both. And it gives you a little bit better of a picture. You could, like, you could have it to where someone rang your doorbell, it would record all the cameras around your house. It's pretty awesome. Uh, just a little thing that seems to make so much sense that, but like, I didn't think of it, you know? Yeah, this yeah, it's one of those things you feel like it should have been a feature all this time, like right. all these years. It's like dark mode on phones and shit. Like, mm-hmm. how what? Why was that hard? <laughs> how, why was that not already a thing? Like, yeah. I don't know, a decade ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it, 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 it it's exactly that. It just seems like such an obvious uh, iteration that why why did? But now it's here, and I, and I I like it. I like the hell out of awesome. it. So um, very good. I don't know. Have you, did, did you ever get your ring doorbell installed? Like, is it fully installed? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's working. Yeah, it works great. I actually, um, I got a notification about three o'clock this afternoon that somebody was at my door, um, which so far it has always meant that UPS was here dropping off a package <laughs> <laughs> every single time. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, that's that. So I will continue on with the next thing that I wanted to bring up. Okay. Yes, please do. Because I don't have a good way to uh, segue into it. <laughs> Patreon. I have been learning so much about Patreon because I'm managing the Patreon for Talking Feds. Yep. 
I have a phone call tomorrow with another client that I might start managing their Patreon as well. Which means we need to start sprucing up our Patreon. (laughs) So uh, November will be the last month that we will be doing per creation uh, donations. We're gonna go. Okay. We're gonna go monthly. After that, I haven't quite figured out the price scale, but it just simplifies it for everyone, especially on months where we get behind, and then the next month we're like throwing them out there really quick, and it ends up charging people extra and this and that. So, in order yeah. to avoid all that and just make it really simple and uh, make it really easy to understand, we're just gonna go monthly, and I think that'll work out best for us because we're not using this as a way to make money. We kind of just take that money as an incentive to do other things and do new things and to help pay for South by things like that. So yeah. uh, we don't, there's no need for us to optimize our income. I'd rather optimize the user experience. Right. Yeah. And, and if, if patrons feel like they were like, well, I was giving you four bucks a month because you usually, you know, do have four creations. And if, if, if it's a, a dollar, like I'm going to, like, I feel like I'm cheating. No, just up your, up your patronage. Like yeah. just, Bring it up to four dollars a month if that's what you want. Yeah, and we'll uh, still do the same. This words. definitely simplifies it and it makes it predictable for everyone. Right, and and what we'll do is we'll balance it out to where um you end up getting the same re- like if you subscribe on Twitch with a basic subscription, it gets us two forty nine a month. Mm-hmm. So like the three dollar tier on Patreon will have the same rewards as being a subscriber on Twitch. You know, th- th- that's kind of how we balance it out. So it, it'll end up saving you guys probably a little bit of money uh, for the most part for the people that, that donate every creation. And then the people that only do- donate once, this is your chance to go in there and uh, refresh it and either either keep it locked at once by just donating a dollar a month or upping it a little bit, knowing that it's only going to ever be that amount. Well, no, you know, there's no relying on Patreon to cut you off right. at a certain point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and W Skies 1 has a good point too. He says that he was doing a dollar per creation but capping at one dollar which i think is what a lot of people do mm-hmm. on patreon and um yeah it'll be a, just a seamless thing for yeah, you won't have to worry about the caps anymore it's just a yep. flat thing so uh, exactly. a little bit simpler and i know i didn't tell you about that before kent because i want to get your reaction live see if there's anything any no i think that's i think that's fantastic um you're absolutely right because like every month is a different like it, it's different. Like people get charged different things every month, right? Month, and it's it's hard to budget that sometimes because most most people support multiple creators on Patreon. So. Yeah, and well, the thing is, the as I'm learning, as I'm going through and going through uh, Patreon University, as they call it, the I'm learning that people once a month is really all people want to be charged. Yep. And then if you, ch- you can charge less often than that by doing a per creation, especially if you're doing a, one video every six weeks or something like that, it makes more sense that way. But then if you do it more often, it just makes everybody's life easier if you just go with a monthly. So we'll be switching to monthly uh, at the end of this cycle. So probably the first week of December, uh, I got to figure out exactly when the best time to switch is, but yeah, that, that that's, that'll make everything easier for everybody. Yeah, that sounds that sounds right. And plus, the people that have been like, "Man, I'm not I'm not doing that per creation crap." Uh, maybe it'll you know ease them into the process of kicking it a buck because they give a fuck, and we can move on from there. Yeah, uh, you're you're getting ahead of the. Uh... <laughs> I am, but I had to say it because I like saying it. You know what? There's a good place for it. Hey, <laughs> if you guys give a fuck, give us a buck over at Patreon.com/slash Ritual Misery. Uh, we're always trying to throw extras in there, pre-shows, post-shows, exclusive interviews. You never know what's going to show up. Yep. <laughs> it's a Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com slash Ritual Misery. If you don't know how it works by now, uh, go to RitualMisery.com, yeah. uh, hit, hit support, and find out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Amos, what, uh, what have you been taking a lot of pictures lately, or what's uh... well, kind of the opposite? So this last week and a half have been kind of slow uh, on the on the work front, um, mostly because we most of my jobs are either coming to an end, like I'm finishing the contracts, or I'm ahead on the normal business of things. So in my meantime, I could play video games, or I could finally get around to culling out pictures. So in the last week and a half, I've deleted about 5,000 pictures from my collection. Mm. Um, and these are pictures that I've taken with my DSLR or my mirrorless, and mostly sports pictures, because what happens is when, when the kid's playing soccer, you end up taking 40 shots in three seconds trying to get that perfect shot, and if you don't get it, you delete all the ones that aren't the perfect shot. 
So mm-hmm. a lot of it's that, but uh, a lot of the a lot of random pictures, some out of focus junkies and all that. But I've been doing that. I've been doing a ton of that, and I've cut about five thousand pictures in the last week and a half. So a storage space. It it is a lot of storage space, and that's actually what started. It was my uh, my NVMe drive is starting to get full, and I was like, well, shit, uh, <laughs> got to delete something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. So, so um. Do you take a lot of pictures just in general? Do you, do you I, hit the, the phone pictures I, or anything? I don't take as much. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't take as many pictures as, as I would like. I, I do take snapshots with my phone uh, when, like, I don't know, when, when something just really strikes me. Uh, but I wish I took a lot more. I, I wish I, like, was a hobbyist. Like, I, when I do it, I really enjoy doing it. Mm-hmm. But I never, like, it's just never at the forefront for me for some reason. Yeah. I get that a lot. Um, something I do a lot, though, is go to the movies. <laughs> you do. Like, every fucking week you go to the movies. Uh, this week I saw Terminator Dark Fate. Now, this movie, uh, after after some consideration and some time away from the movie, uh, rated as an all right. Or no, no, as a fine from Tom Merritt. Right, 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 right. Which yeah, I believe I, is middle of the road. Yeah, it's like the lower end of middle, kind of. It's, you know... I. I listened to their spoiler in time. Mm-hmm. I almost always disagree with with Brian Brushwood. <laughs> like his idea of what a, a movie should be is like the opposite of mine. Mm. Uh, um, but he panned the movie. Uh, Tom was just kind of like, eh, it's not, I guess if you like Terminator, <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, Terminator 2 is one of my favorite movies of all time. Okay, fair enough. It's a good mo- good movie. There's been a lot of shitty Terminator movies since then. Um, but in my scale... A lot, though? Yeah, there's there's been... Yeah. How many Most have there of, been? Because I only, only remember one. No, there's been like... Between Terminator 2 and Dark Fate, there's been like three or four movies. Oh, wow. They must have been yeah. really shitty because I didn't even hear about them. Yeah. Yeah, most of them sucked. I saw the uh, last one in the theater, though. So my favorite Terminator movie is still Terminator 2. I okay. would put Dark Fate as my second favorite one. Followed by Terminator 1, followed by the TV show, the Sarah Connor Chronicles, <laughs> and then all the other garbage is after that. <laughs> what was the one before this? The one that had like, uh, not Natalie Dormer. Had, um, no, it had Khaleesi. Yeah. Uh, yep. Um, that, mm. I enjoyed that one. I, didn't, I thought that one was fine. So <laughs> like I, I wouldn't rush out to watch it again, but I, I, it's not like I was mad that I spent six bucks to see it in the theater. There, so I would say the majority of the movie itself, like the first half to maybe even three quarters of the movie, I thought was was all right. I, mm-hmm. I was enjoying myself. Um, but um, the whole John Connor thing, I thought, was god awful. And um, not only did I think it was god awful that I, you know, I didn't like the twist. But they revealed the twist in the fucking trailer. <laughs> like the third act twist, the oh my God moment of the movie. Uh, let's just, fuck it. Let's just throw it in the, tw- in the trailer. Like nobody gives a shit anyway. Uh, so that's what I feel like they did. That's always a bad sign. Yeah. Um, so I didn't, I, I didn't enjoy that. So as much. a blanket statement, I feel the more you give in the trailer, the less you want to, them to see in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. So. But I enjoyed Dark Fate. It, it felt very much like Terminator 2 kind of brought me back into into there, uh, which is kind of fitting because this movie takes place. It's like Terminator 1, Terminator 2, Dark Fate. Hmm. And then everything else is kind of like in an alternate timeline sort of thing. Yeah, I didn't understand where the last one came in. Like, it kind of jumped jumped a little bit. Went back yeah. and forth. It was, I don't know. Well, in, action, in, all of the, in all the Terminator sequels after Terminator 2, they still somehow failed at stopping Skynet. Uh, the different with this, the difference with this movie is that what they accomplished in the first and second movie counted. Like they, they actually did defeat Skynet. Gotcha. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't matter. But yeah, it kind of ultimately didn't matter. Uh, but anyway, All right. um, shall we but, check in on the uh, the movie draft to see how but, we're doing? Yes, let's do that. Okay, let's see if it works this week. 
Welcome to your Blue League Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv, for the week of November 4th, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. Hey, someone just tried to sell me Supergirl, Wonder Woman, and Jessica Jones. I think they might be a heroin dealer. Let's go to the scoreboard! Team Gelf is in last place with $5.3 million. Team RMP is in fifth place with $6.5 million. Team Snowshoes in fourth place with $12.5 million. Team Have a Drink is $34 million from Terminator Dark Fate. And third place, Team Geek Grills is in second place with $195 million. And in first place, with $389.9 million, it's Team DKG. Well, that's your Stream Team Movie Draft Minute. For up to date listings, follow Stream Team Draft on Twitter. Yeah. So Terminator didn't make a lot of money. <laughs> no. Uh, 36 million, which I think is quite disappointing. I don't I don't think it's made its budget back yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. It's got time. Yeah. Um, we're going to be in last place very soon. Next week, we're going to be in last place. <laughs> and we're going to stay in last place for about a month. Until the end of December. Change, yeah. Yeah. And then we're going to shoot straight up to second place and probably just stay there. Yeah, I th- uh, yeah. DKG's got a strong slate, man. Joker yeah. really, really did well for those guys. Um, it did. We 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 need we need something else of Joker's to bomb because as projected, we were only like sixty million ahead of them before the before the the season started. So we need something else of theirs to bomb, or we need Star Wars to really come through big for us. Or or bombshell just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> it just blows it up. Which I don't think that's going to happen because it comes out the same day as Star Wars. Uh, so. Damn. Uh, but we got it cheap, so. Yeah, I mean, it's it's whatever. Yeah. Whatever. All right. Um. Hey, are we going to uh to do a little Patreon plug here? Um. We did a Patreon plug. Um. But uh, people forgot they can go to patreoncom slash ritual misery and and uh, become a patron and and see how cool it is. To be our boss. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Right, but I mean, are they actually going to be our boss, or is that just something you say? Yeah, they can they can boss me around, but just like my boss in real life, if I don't want to do it, I'll just tell them not. Nah, <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Fire me if you want, but I ain't doing that. This is really PC way of saying fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Um, uh, we, we have a guest tonight as our guest part of the game. Should he be part of the game? He should be part of the game. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and bring our guest in here. Uh, Jeremy, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, we can. Excellent. Jeremy was a co-host of Ritual Misery way back in the early days of this show. <laughs> Welcome back to Ritual Misery, Jeremy. Yeah, it's been a minute, hasn't it? Yeah. Yes, a very long one. It's uh, it's been about two beards ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've got a few. <laughs> it's a bit much now. Huh? Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so I I don't know if you've uh, if you've been catching up on things, but uh, now's about the time that I hit this button right here. Can I please have your attention? In the last thirty minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent. Games. Play with them. That's supposed to be a lot louder. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you, Big Voice Jay, for providing uh, the sounder for that. Yeah. Um, All right, Kent, tell us what you've done in the last 30 minutes. Uh, I And I talked to Jeremy before the show, and he knows that I hadn't even started on the game 30 minutes before the show began. So uh, it was very literally true this week. Um, this week, our game is called Oxfordian Slip. Oh, so you guys are natives of Oxford, Indiana, as well as I am. Well, I'm uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a naturalized Ox- Oxfordite. Right. Well, as as is Jeremy. To be fair. Yeah. No, not yeah. you, Kent. I was I was raised there from day one. Well, probably more like day three. Three. But, <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, I thought it would be fun to ask you guys questions about Oxford. Now, Ken, I, I have a question for you. Which hospital were you born at? Uh, St. Elizabeth. Okay, so we weren't even born in the same hospital. Correct, yeah. 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 How about no, you, you, Jeremy? Were, were you born like Montmorency or something? Ball Memorial, Muncie. Muncie. So it's basically the yep. same thing. Montmorency, really? <laughs> like, 
There's like seven people. Other side of the state. Whatever. (laughs) If it's not in Oxford, Fowler, or on I-65, I don't know what the hell it is anyway. All right, uh, Jeremy, I'm going to flip a coin. Virtually. Via Google. Virtually flip a coin here. Uh, Call heads or tails? Tailed. It is heads. Amos, do you want to go first or last? Oh, I'm going second. I'm going to let Jeremy go first. I can game the hell out of this if I go last. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right, Jeremy, your first question about Oxford, Indiana. What was the original name of the town? Was it Milroy, Hartford, or Oxford? I thought it was always Oxford. It was actually Milroy. Uh, they they realized that um, there was already a Milroy, Indiana, so they had to change it. This is one of the stupid things that I actually knew. <laughs> All right, smarty pants. What name did no, no. they change? What name did they change the town to after they they couldn't name it Milroy? Was it Hartford, Oxford, or Oxtucky? Well, it wasn't Oxtucky. That's just what we call it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And you wouldn't be asking the question if it was Oxford, so I'm going to go with the other one. Uh, so Hartford? Hartford. Well done. Well done. Um, they couldn't. They couldn't name it Hartford either, though, because there was already a Hartford, Indiana, as well. <laughs> so they eventually, uh, Judge McConnell, uh, chose the name Oxford, and it turned out there was no Oxford, Indiana yet, so it stuck. All right, Jer. In which yeah. year was the town incorporated? Was it 1858, 1865, or 1869? 1858, I think. You think it was 1858? Yep. It was 1869. 1869. Amos. In which year was Oxford's population at its peak of 1,327 people? Where the hell did they all live? <sighs> was it 1960, 1970, or 1980? 1970. It's 1980, actually. Wow. Yep, and then it's been declining ever since. I mean, some might say it was declining before that. Well, (laughs) (laughs) all right. Uh, I think people just started fucking less and moving out. Uh, I don't know about that. Because there's not much else to do. Yeah, I was going to say there's only two things to do in Indiana. Fuck and smoke. (laughs) Basically. Basically. All All right, Jeremy. Yeah. (laughs) Jeremy is doing his best to populate Oxford. He's like, I can't smoke, so I'm going to fuck the hell out of this. (laughs) <laughs> all right jeremy true or false oxford was the original seat of Benton county that's true it is in fact true then the fowler fuckers took it yeah because fowler was more centrally located so they moved the county seat to fowler Bastards. all right amos true or false the first building erected in Oxford was a courthouse. False. Oh. It was, in fact, the courthouse, uh, which added to Oxford's disappointment several years later when they moved the courthouse to Fowler. <laughs> um, or incidentally, the second building erected was a hotel. Where was this courthouse? Uh, the town square. Like in the square itself? Or yep. like on the square? No, like in the square. Inside like, the square, like where the pagoda the, is. The 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 gazebo? Sure. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's where the courthouse was. And they tore it down and moved it to Fowler. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think they moved it to Fowler, but they uh, erected one in Fowler and uh, took the one in Oxford down. All right, Jeremy. Who was Dan Patch's breeder and original owner? Was it Dan Messner, Messner. Marion Savage, or Joe Patchen? <laughs> Messner. It, uh, oh, 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 hold on. So the um, 
the the sad clown uh, was for me hitting the wrong button. Um, it was in fact Dan Messner. So congratulations on on getting that one right. Um, Joe Patchen I threw in there. I thought that was funny. Joe Patchen was the name of Dan Patch's father, actually. Uh, for for the people sire. listening, yeah, his sire. Yeah, exactly. For people that don't know what the fuck we're talking about, Dan Patch was a racehorse, and he's the most famous resident. To come out of Oxford, uh, outside of me, of course. Um, but yeah, a racehorse. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I can Amos. remember when we first moved to Oxford. Back in, what, 86? Mm-hmm. We've seen the name Dan Patch on the water tower. My dad goes, who the fuck is Dan Patch? <laughs> and being in elementary school in third grade, we had an Indiana history thing. So I knew who Dan Patch was. I said, it's a, it's a harness racing horse. It's a, what the fuck? <laughs> and the, what the dead, fuck is harness you know? race? Yeah. And, yeah. and just so people understand, Oxford, home of Dan Patch, is still painted on the water tower in the center of town. Yep. Um, yeah. Oxford is a one horse town. And the horse has been dead. Yep. For about 100 years now. <laughs> Amos, in which town did Dan Patch originally train for racing? Okay. All right. Was it Oxford? Templeton or Boswell? Hmm. Clearly not Oxford because that'd be too obvious. Boswell, maybe, but I got to go with Templeton just because we got we got to ha- hate the Boswell bitches. It was ne- Templeton. Never give Boswell credit for anything ever. <laughs> A fucking Nobel Peace Prize laureate could come out of Boswell and it would still claim it was Benton County. <laughs> Fuck Boswell. Mr. Martin used to call it the hub cap of the universe. The hub cap of the universe, exactly. If, if, you, if you're listening to this and you're from Boswell or live in Boswell, uh, please um, uh, write into the show, uh, podcast at ritualmisery.com. We want to hear from you. Jeremy, true or false? Oxford is a great town for raising pit bulls. False. <laughs> it's been illegal to own a pit bull in Oxford for many, many, many years. Amos, true or false? Oxford is a great town for underage alcohol consumption and drug use. True. Um, uh, and that's our game, gentlemen. Uh, you <laughs> have, we have a tie score, each of you with three apiece, which means you collectively got sixty percent. You guys got, got the D. The... Oh yeah. Uh, Jeremy, how's it feel to get the D? <laughs> I prefer to give him the D. <laughs> <laughs> Well, next my job. next time you should uh, you should totally just write the quiz yourself. Then, then you can give the D. Okay. <laughs> Stop fronting on Ken's giving of the D. Come on, man. All right, Jeremy. Um, so, there's two reasons I wanted you to come on the show. One, it's been a too damn long since you've been on, and I, I really just wanted to have you on for that purpose. Um, the other reason I wanted to have you on is because I want, I wanted a, a man, a man on the ground, uh, somebody with their finger on the pulse of an international breaking story. Um, <laughs> Oxford, Indiana has been in the news lately. Uh, most of our listeners probably are like, what the fuck? I haven't heard about that. But when we talk about the, the headline, they probably like, oh fuck, I did see that. Uh, they just didn't realize it was Kent and Amos's hometown. Because I didn't realize it was our hometown until Kent pointed it out. I just saw the headline. I was like, oh, "What stupid bitch!" Okay, moving on. Yeah. So um, someone unfortunately passed away uh, about a week ago, almost exactly a week ago, actually, um, d- due to apparent strangulation by a snake. Uh, do yeah. I have that right, Jeremy? Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> uh, how this story ended up in international news baffles the shit out of me. 
<laughs> well, it's not very often that someone is found dead with a with a snake wrapped around their their neck. I think that's no, why no, no, no. it's kind of the it's kind of like the Florida man story, right? Because like it, yeah. it's real easy to find a you know Florida man does stupid fucking thing that that nobody's ever heard of before, and it's kind of a story. I get seen by elephant. But uh, yeah, I, I was when I heard about it, I was. I think I was actually in Lafayette and I remember, uh, doing something and the alert came on my phone. I was like, woman found dead in Oxford. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> right, right, right. So I was like, <laughs> so I proceeded to find out more about the story is that there was a woman and I live what, two blocks from where this woman lives or the house that the woman died. The woman actually was from Battleground. Right, right. Uh, but anyway, this this woman, there is a house that is owned by our county sheriff. Right next to his house is a house that is full of snakes. Full of snakes. And yes, full of snakes. Now this like is this is snakes. intentional, right? Yes, it's a snake house. It is a. It, there are most of them are all in cages, except for the one that obviously strangled this poor woman to death. Right. Right. So this woman, like, she didn't just like stumble into the the house. She owned snakes no, of her own and kept them at uh, the sheriff's house or at the sheriff's snake house. Sorry. Yes. And the sheriff went into the house and found her unresponsive on the floor with a snake around her throat. So he proceeded to call it in, and they tried to revive her. And they could. Now, of course, being in a small town, uh, you would imagine what kind of stupid ass rumors would fly around this town. That's really why I wanted to talk to you, because all the rest of this story could be found in news articles that are easily Googled. Um, I want to hear the crazy theories and rumors that are going around Oxford right now. Uh, be, be, before we get there, though, I have I need to set the stage one step further. Okay, Jeremy, as a resident of Oxford, Indiana, did you know prior to this event that the house was a snake house? Oh fuck no! Okay, so this was not common knowledge. No. Okay. All right, just just an important but, piece to the puzzle because right, right, right. The and less the, people know, the wilder their fucking ideas get. Right. For, for, for those exactly. that, that haven't read the articles, it, there were upwards of a hundred and forty snakes in this house. Yeah. Okay. So, Jeremy, yeah. what uh, ear on the ground on the scene? What crazy whiplash stories have been going on about a the woman, b the sheriff, c the snakes, and d all of the above? <laughs> well, but the dumbest one that I've heard is prior to the autopsy determining that the woman was actually killed by the snake, is the sheriff killed this woman and placed a snake around her neck. Okay. Now, we have you on record saying the sheriff killed the woman <laughs> and then placed a snake around her neck. So that, yes. that to me, that, that is to me is dumbest. like. That's a, that is the that dumbest like one the I've obvious. heard. Yeah, yeah, it's a dumb one, but it's also like the obvious one, right? Like, of, yeah, it of is. Course. Yeah. Now, without getting in too much too much in, into this county politics and stuff, uh, back in the late '90s, maybe early 2000s, back when our sheriff was a deputy. Our deputy, he was arrested for stealing gasoline from our town. Ah, right. He was filling up the car, uh, charging it to the county's account, but using it for personal use. Yes, that's correct. And he got busted for that and reprimanded and all this other shit. Yep, and 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 tiny towns never forget. No, they don't. (laughs) And... (laughs) Most there are some people in this county county that have that holds a grudge against him and think he has you know he's crooked. So the big one is he he's either staged this woman's death or he was having an affair with her 
and wanted to offer or something stupid that that's <laughs> all the of course. stupid shit that I put. Of course. Yep. Yep. And, I mean, it's a bit of a leap to go from from um, incorrectly charging the county for gasoline 20 years ago and murder. Right. <laughs> like, that's a giant leap. That's, that's a big leap there. You know? <laughs> yes. And yeah, I, I sat there and, and heard this shit. And I was like, no, she, she was holding the constrictor. <laughs> yes. And, th- and this, this snake is about seven and a half feet long. Yes. And she was a rather uh, dimin- diminutive lady. Uh, she was not, uh, she's not a big gal. Uh, so this snake was like the size of her. Like, like, um, in weight, probably. Like, this snake was pretty large. Yeah, he was, he was small. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. But most of it, like, the, 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 the snake thing, it's like, why the hell are there so many goddamn snakes? Because that's all that's in this house is just snakes. There is nobody living in the house. It's just a snake habitat. Yeah, and it's interesting to me that no one knew about it because uh, uh, Sheriff Munson is kind of a well-known uh, snake lover and, and breeder. Like he's he's taken his snakes to schools, um, and you know, shown them off at public events. Um, it, it's a fairly well-known thing that that he's a lover of snakes, um, which I, it kind of surprises me that he doesn't um, he hasn't like publicized that that he has snakes there that like maybe even offer, you know, to show it to people. Yeah. Like I said, I, I, I live in this town, but you know what I know and don't know about people that live in this town could fill volume because I (laughs) I try to mind my own business. (laughs) Yep. I, I think the the last time that Oxford made the news on any kind of um, uh, large scale was when an old lady shot her husband in the front yard <laughs> for being an asshole. Yep, in the same house that the sheriff lives in. <laughs> now, she didn't go out and like shoot him and kill him. She went out there with bird shot in a in a tw- like a twenty gauge shotgun. Went out there and shot him in the leg for being an asshole. Would have been yeah, fine. Being Would have been fine, except a fucking pellet from the bird shot traveled up his vein into his heart and stopped his heart, and he died. And they prosecuted her for murder. Yeah, and this was like thirty years ago. It, I mean, not quite that because it was while I was in Indiana in the in the time between my my California. Or oh yeah, so all right, so probably closer to twenty five. Yeah, twenty five. But yeah, that's that was like the last time, and it was a freakish accident of bad aim. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Oxford! Yeah, how I miss you (laughs) sometimes. All right, so my my next question is: as small as Oxford is, how do you not know that there's heat on in the entire winter, and only one person is going in and out of this place, and nobody else lives there? The lights are never on, all that shit. Like, I don't understand how. The entire town of Oxford either didn't have some mystique about this house or know that some shady shit was going down. And the sheriff was involved. <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe that's just I, my my cynical, uh, a pessimistic California mind creeping in on my Indiana <laughs> roots. I don't know. Like it fucking freaks me the hell out. I'd be like, "What the shit?" Me and Kent would have been yeah, would have been sitting on the back porch of that house, wondering who the fuck lived there. <laughs> That's and then not, Jeremy would have come up and been like, you dumbasses, get over here. Get the fuck away from that house. Like, that's how yeah. that would have gone down if we'd known yeah. in high school. That's Yeah, that's right. It's like, don't you know the fucking sheriff lives right there, asshole? Yeah, and, and Pat would have got caught breaking in to see who was living in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a- <laughs> like, it just looked like a house. It looked nice and warm. I figured I could go chill out for a while. <laughs> he's going to hear that and kill me over fucking Facebook. And then he, yeah, and then he's going <laughs> to... He's gonna and tell us about it later. Out. Tell us that he found 140 snakes and we call him <laughs> full of shit. Yeah, we like play your fucking hand, yeah, dude. It's your turn. <laughs> because he wouldn't tell us for like I don't know a day and a half or two days. So right. like you go, oh fuck, I forgot to tell you. So like 
Two days ago, I broke into a house and found like 200 snakes. <laughs> what the fuck? What are you? You're a what, are you what are you doing? What are you doing with 100 and something snakes? Oh, I've been selling them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! I can remember going to, going to Vaughn's with Pat. Oh, back I think when Dragons of Summer Flame came out. Oh geez! And I was okay. going in there to go in there and buy this book, you know. Yeah, so this I is go a in Dragon there and I grab my copy, and Pat is like walking around the fucking store. And he's wearing this long fucking trench coat. So I grab the book. I go pay for the book. And we walk out, we get in the car, and as we get in the car, we pull off and we drive to another parking lot and he gets out and he just starts pulling out like 12, 15 friggin' bucks from the inside <laughs> of his coat. <laughs> like, what in the hell, you know? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the, shit, the shit we got away from children. Uh, we- I mean, in his defense, there were no price tags on the shelf. Um, there's that. <laughs> I mean, if you don't, if you don't put a price tag on it, it's free, right? Right. Yeah. No, you're supposed to clearly label the prices of all the merchandise. <sighs> it's uh, uh, it's state law. They call it the free ninety nine rule. The free ninety, yeah, free ninety nine, exactly. Uh, Jeremy. <laughs> so, since every media outlet on the planet seemingly is reporting on Oxford, Indiana, have you seen media vans? Like, has there been a a presence of of outside media? Uh, not that I've noticed. <laughs> one dude, one dude from the Journal and Courier in Lafayette came in, took some pictures, and he syndicated it through AP to every news outlet in the yeah. world. And now it, he doesn't have to work anymore. Well, and there was a newscaster from I think it was it was either Channel Six or Channel Thirteen out of Indianapolis that uh, he filmed on the front yard of the Snake House. I mean, yeah, he probably uh, did he though? drove his own car. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say Diddy though, because kind of like Oxford doesn't look any different than all the houses in Lafayette. Uh, well, that's true. You just you just find a blue house and you film some shit. Nobody ever nobody's gonna go to Oxford to prove them wrong. <laughs> that's yeah, that's <laughs> too accurate. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, well, Jeremy, we appreciate the uh, the 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 hands on ground or. F- f- Ear on air, however that works, whatever the can't help me out here. God damn it. <laughs> uh, thank you for the, the man on the scene reporting Jeremy. And thank you for, for gracing us, uh, with your time and your presence tonight. It was a lot of fun to see you on the show again. Ladies and gentlemen, the uh, ritual misery Oxford correspondent, Jeremy Dillon. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. Where, where, uh, where can people find uh, f- find your Twitter account to see that you uh, you don't use it very often? <laughs> <laughs> At Jay Dillon. There you go. Awesome. All right, Jer. Thanks, man. All right, talk to you soon, brother. See you. See ya. All right. <clears throat> so that was Jeremy. It's good to have him on again. Hell yeah, yeah. We need to make this uh, more of a, a regular thing. Make it like and- a. And he didn't even fall asleep this time. <laughs> that was known to happen once or twice. <laughs> um, no, good times. Good times. All right. Uh, hey, Kent, it's about time to wrap up the show. So I'm going to ask you, um, what's a tweet you've been enjoying? Dude, so I started following uh, this woman on Twitter a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Sarah Beatty is her name. She's a she's a comedian. She's a writer. And... Um, Somebody retweeted her or uh, quote tweeted her. They call it quote tweet anymore. Uh, uh, sure. Retweet with comment, I think is what it's called now. Anyway, um, and I really liked it, and I I thought this is hilarious. Let me click on her. I got uh, it open. Saw that saw that she was um, yeah. funny consistently, mm-hmm. and uh, so and I, I followed her immediately. I, I've actually been following her for a while because of the uh, of, a, of a show called The Daily Zeitgeist that quotes a bunch of tweets and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, she's pretty pretty funny. Yeah, she's at Nacho Sarah on Twitter. And uh, the tweet that I thought was hilarious is actually her pinned tweet. This is all, all the way back from uh, uh, March of 2013. She says, I saw a chameleon today, so I guess it was a pretty shitty chameleon. Accurate. Uh, 
Yeah, which I thought was great, and um, I I was reading that as I was taking a drink, and uh, oh, drink almost <laughs> came out my nose. So <laughs> I like it. And where can people I, find you? What's that? Where can people find you? Oh yeah, if you want to find my not as funny tweets, uh, go to rm underscore del noche on Twitter and see what's going on over there. All right, man. Um, I've been, uh, I, I've, I found one just today and I thought it was just the most damn amazing tweet I'd seen all day, uh, which is it probably not saying a whole lot cause I check Twitter a lot. Um, this is the New York attorney general, James, uh, at New York state AG. He comes in with breaking. We've secured a court order forcing president Trump to pay $2 million in damages after admitting to illegally using the Trump foundation to help him intervene in the 2016 presidential election and further his own political interests. No one is above the law. And Mm -hmm. then Patton Oswalt comes in with, then how the fuck is he still president? (sighs) Yeah. So good, so direct, so to the point, and so right in line with exactly how I feel every day. And you can find me and all my less funny tweets at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. You can also find our show at Ritual Misery on Twitter. Thanks to Jeremy for releasing the the uh, the Twitter name for us. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he was the original owner of that account. Yeah. Um, and uh, of course, you can follow all things that we do on the show at ritualmisery.com and uh, join the conversation on our Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Hell yeah. We are live every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific on diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritualmisery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, and for you, this has been your. Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. I swear there's music. Yeah, we were a little early or late on the music. I couldn't hear it. So. Oh. Oh. Shut up. Shut up, Ken. Nobody asked you. Oh, and by the way. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R I T U A L M I S E R Y. All right. Um. Wait. That's that's the wrong button. Oh, that's creepy. That's that's the wrong that's button. That's creepy too. Where's? <laughs>